Hello and welcome to the small walkthrough video for the programming component of assignment 2 for IGB 181 students in semester 1 of 2020 and hopefully onwards. Uh, this video is to cover the small programming element in the assignment and is provided because the vast majority of students, uh, at least at this point, may not know how to program in C Sharp and providing the desired solution is therefore sensible. The programming task for this assignment is purely a checklist completion style task for this and does not need to be expanded upon. So just a couple things before we jump into the video. The assignment is about following the various design, programming and artistic steps throughout the workshops associated with it towards completion. It's not actually about making a unique game, but more about showing you the workflow of the various roles necessary to complete even a basic mechanic such as jumping. Uh, that's why we call it the vertical slice. It's an analogy for taking a slice of cake or pie that has multiple layers of ingredients. Uh, so you'll have plenty of opportunities at QUT to do your own thing in the very near future, just not necessarily for this assignment. So, let's get stuck into it. By now your workshop tutors should have shown you the basics of Unity. I will not be recovering that here, so if you do need some assistance with that, uh, do ask your tutors to give you a hand with that. Alongside these instructions will be a workshop document that we will allow you to copy and paste the code if you would prefer to do so instead of typing it all out. So feel free to use that as well. Uh, also make sure you download the latest version of the assignment base as a few quality of life changes have been made to make this process just a little bit easier. Alright, so in your Unity project in the assets folder you should have a folder called scripts and in scripts there should be two scripts, uh, player and GUI. Those are the two scripts that you need to open. You can open them by double clicking them in Unity or externally. Hopefully they open in the editor of choice which you may need to set up in Unity itself. Uh, if that's not working for you, you may need to reinstall Unity. You could open this in WordPad but I don't recommend it. I, I would suggest opening it in Visual Studio proper. So, in player.cs, the player script, you need to create two public floats for angle and gravity, like so. Do note that velocity already exists here for movement, because we needed that to move our character left and right. So that already exists in the game, we don't need to add velocity. Having put that in, go back into Unity and adjust the values for angle and gravity to the values that you set up in the previous week. Now something I should mention here is that we don't actually set the value for velocity because again your velocity is calculated based off your player's movement speed which you can change. We already have a default value for, your, for you there so feel free to adjust that. In order to use gravity correctly we do need to override Unity's default gravity setting by putting a line of code in start, which we can do here. Uh, and this line of code will simply override the negative gravity force with the, on the y-axis with the gravity setting that you have set in Unity. Now, scroll down to the blank method called jump. In Jump, we're going to put a large amount of script that is related to the jump mechanic that we were talking about last week. Now, there are a few lines of code here in order to set this up correctly. Essentially, we need to establish a forward vector correctly, as well as account for Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, but the most important line here is the one that you're potentially vaguely familiar with, which is the displacement formula, which is this line here. Uh, and that looks very similar to what you were dealing with last week. After this we do need to recorrect for height based off the hypotenuse of the triangle that we are dealing with. Uh, and this is relative to the point of origin of where we are jumping from. As well as uh, just a very simple error check to reduce the amount of irrelevant data that we could get off this jump. But the most important line is again that displacement formula and the surrounding lines are 
sort of what we need to do to ensure that this thing works correctly. Finally, the last thing we are going to do in update, uh, if you scroll back up to update, is just uncomment these two lines here, which allows us to set our jumping boolean to true and allow our animator to also receive the jumping true uh, boolean check. However, we're not done yet. Do go back into the GUI script uh, and add the following two lines of code to start. And all this is doing is just setting it up so that we actually display something in two visual elements that we already have on screen. Now a lot of that is probably very unfamiliar to you. That's okay. The point of this video is just to show you the kind of work that a programmer may need to do to get this to to work correctly. In the future, uh, whether you are a programmer or not, some of this may start making a little bit more sense. But again, for the purposes of this video, you just need to see the kind of work that a programmer does. So one other thing to add about this uh, specific jump mechanic is that, and we'll talk about this more in the workshop, this isn't a, a jumping mechanic where you're supposed to be able to jump from a stationary position. Obviously, if you've been paying attention up until this point, you'll know that it's using a ballistic equation. And if our velocity is zero, obviously we can't jump in the air. Uh, so you need to make a running jump in order to jump. That is the idea of this mechanic, is that we're moving from place to place. But more specifically, we're jumping over these large gaps in order to get to the next tile. So yes, currently, in its current iteration, jumping from a stationary position doesn't work. There is no code to accommodate that. That is intentional. That is not a missing bug, feature, oversight, whatever. We just haven't done anything yet. For the purpose of this assignment, we're also not going to do anything, nor do you expect to. The idea is that you make a running jump. So if that seems confusing to you, why can't I jump right now? That is why. So just to wrap this up, uh, again, there is a text document in this week's workshop that you can use to copy and paste a lot of this code from. You're not expected to type it out, of course. Uh, follow that. Worst case scenario, do ask your tutors for any additional assistance if things just do not seem to be working at all or you're getting any errors with your code. Um, otherwise, that's the programming element. Just follow it along and you should be able to jump in the way we expect for the assignment. Awesome.